Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, we're going live in three, two, one. Anita Painter, I think we are live. What's going on? Well, just a lot of sunshine and happiness over here on the island. Is it sunny today? It's sunny. Awesome. It's great here too. Um, Wow, nobody cares about that on YouTube. I just want to remind everybody uh, coming in after the fact. Yeah, for sure. If you're here on the live stream, yeah, type your questions in after the fact. If you have questions for Anita Painter, who is on the live stream and is a realtor in Campbell River, BC, beautiful, sunny Campbell River, BC. Are you allowed to say Campbell River without we saying are. beautiful? Oh, you got to tone down your uh, noise over there. Uh, um. <laughs> Are you so you're a realtor in Campbell River? We're going to talk about moving to the island because uh, so many people are doing that, um, awesome. which is absolutely crazy. But before we get there, uh, if you like talking real estate, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And uh, Anita, let's get into it. What's going on? Tell me about your market. Well, it's been super busy still. We're definitely still seeing some multiple offers. We have a little bit more inventory that's come on in the last three weeks. So I think that's really great for a lot of the buyers. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me, Steve? What What's your inventory? Like what's, okay, let's go, let's go. Pre-COVID, what's regular, how many listings are on the market in Campbell River? So for a single family detached, like, like how you're laughing right No, like now. total, like total. Total active listings yeah very minimal like right now we probably have under 60 single family dwellings crazy that's it is crazy it's tough well a lot of buyers from the mainland will say well we just can't find a lot on the market right now and it's like no what you see is what you got yeah that's yeah. all there is yeah we don't even have properties here right just <laughs> but i mean so you've seen um the the shift, right? You've seen the people come from here and go get more for their money there. Are they being disappointed kind of now going over there and seeing like, oh crap, this is expensive now too? Or is it still pretty affordable? Well, I don't think that they're thinking it's too expensive. I mean, you can still, you know, you can get brand new ranchers that are under 850. So uh, that's still, you know, quite affordable for people coming from the mainland. Like, what's your average sale price right now? Mm, I mean, detached. Yeah, detached in Surrey right now is like, uh, I think benchmark price is, well, between, depending on which number you look at, like 1.6 to 1.8. Yeah, so our single family average sale price right now is 740. Yeah, wow. Right? So, it's, so it's, 740 right now is a lower end two bed townhouse. That's yeah. here. So they're definitely not thinking it's expensive. Yeah. So, but do you have then like the income required? Because like everybody always thinks, oh, I'm going to move to Calgary. And then they're like, oh, the problem is there's maybe not the same jobs in Calgary. Like, do you guys have that income requirement in the industry there to like sustain those? Or is it literally the prices are lower because you just don't have the same average income? Well, I think that there's a lot of people who are actually semi retiring, cashing yeah. out from you know, the mainland, even we've seen a lot of Alberta buyers, Ontario, like the mix has just been, you know, I'm, this is just my own stat, but I would say that at least 80% of the buyers that we are dealing with in, within my office are not local. No. How many? No. 80%? Yes. It's all oh out of goodness. town people. You got the, you guys need that no mainland uh, buyer tax or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> Didn't like Nova Scotia just put that in like, we don't even want people from, they're not just no foreign buyers. We're like nobody from anywhere else. Right? Exactly. Full disclosure, no cocktails today, Anita. Just uh, a bubbly. H2O to go. <laughs> <laughs> so so here, here's the weird thing. Like for us, like working with my partner, Chris, for so many years, like 2013, 2014, 2015, all the way up until like tw probably 2018, most of our listings that we were selling, people were just leaving town, right? So we had an issue with our like clientele of like, oh, the new people coming here aren't from here. So like we would have a lot of listings selling, but we wouldn't know a lot of the buyers coming into the area, right? Because they're people from out of Canada, outside of province, all these, like, all these things. So is that kind of like what your experience, like everybody that's reaching out to you, uh, first of all, are they reaching out to you 
before they come to Campbell River uh, and looking for an agent there? Or are you seeing like out of area agents like bringing the clients in? Because we can sell anywhere in the province legally. Very few out of town agents. I'm, and I mean, coming from the mainland or even further south, Victoria, very few actually come to our market. Very few. Maybe last year I had like three from Vancouver who came over. Yeah. Um, but I would say that most people have a realtor before they come over. Yeah. They'll, yes, they'll phone and, you know, we'll get them set up on a buyer's agency and they'll start to look at the market because, again, they go, we can only see about four houses. For what we're so they're like coming over for like the weekend and like, hey, we're going to go look at these places and like pick one or are they making multiple trips? They're usually FaceTime showing now because we still we do a lot of FaceTime showings for people out of town because it's a it's a bit of a trek to get over here and take the ferry. It's a day, right? And um, how many like how many like how many of your showings are like with FaceTime? Well, between Nicole and I in our office, I would say on average, we do at least 10 FaceTime showings a week for out of town buyers. Really? Oh my yes. goodness. It's so different than here. Like I sold one house, let's call it quote unquote virtual during the pandemic. But I mean, we did the whole FaceTime viewings and stuff, but that was like, they already knew, uh, there were people that used to live here and they're coming back. So they already kind of knew the area. I can't, I mean, if we've had a couple of investors, I guess, but I just can't believe that like, that's yeah. the norm so, for you. You're actually that person that they say is going around showing property with, wow, that's absolutely. crazy to me. So, and then, so these people are like retirees mostly. Well, or gearing up to retire, okay. semi-retiring to getting rid of their job, taking a, you know, oh, maybe I'll work at the golf course or, you know, they're not too sure what they're going to do, but they're not fully retiring. I would say that there's a lot of, you know, 50 to 60 year olds moving to the island or they're moving here because their kids live here. Oh, so the kids have already gone. Mm -hmm. So now they're like, we're going to go follow them and see the grandkids and all that stuff. Yeah. But right. why? Why? Why Campbell River? Why not? Why Park not Campbell River? <laughs> <laughs> Campbell River, I think is honestly, we used to be that little mill town you know, really like on the island, you've got three kind of industrial hubs, Victoria, Nanaimo, then Campbell River. Most people would go to, you know, Parksville, Comox Valley, but Campbell River is um, really just become discovered. We have way more waterfront than the Comox Valley. You know, our seawalk alone is 17 kilometers that goes all the way along and you you know, we just have way more view homes. We're the same distance to Mount Washington. We offer, you know, four golf courses. There's just a lot for a lifestyle choice. Can Can I share with you my disappointment of Campbell River? And I don't want this to be a judgment. I have family that's probably going to watch this in Campbell River that's lived there forever. I would love to hear why you don't like Campbell River, Steve. Not, no, no, no. I love it. I'm just saying my disappointment with it when I go there is the highway is the best real estate in all of Campbell River. And like you're driving every day looking at the ocean, but it's like I can't really buy too many homes that are on the ocean. Well, maybe you just haven't explored a lot out into like say Painter Barkley area. Not that I'm biased because I'm a painter, but Painter Barkley area has a lot of waterfront. There's a lot of little roads off the side that are not just on the highway that offer a lot of waterfront as well. Okay. Well, how come you never took me there? How come we never went on a tour? Well, yeah, I didn't know you were shopping for real estate, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I see a, a question I want to get to here. So, if, yeah, if you're on, uh, everybody can answer a question. This is actually for me. Sorry, Anita. You're going to have to deal with some Surrey stuff. Uh, um, hi, Steve. I have a question for you, hoping you can help. I probably can't, but we'll see what we can do. My family is new to BC. We're looking at Langley, Cloverdale, Ladner, South Surrey. Could you share which one will grow faster? Uh, Ladner will not grow. So if you're looking for a smaller town feel, Ladner, by the way, feels like Campbell River in a lot of places, just so you know. Not sure if you've been there. Uh, Anita, no. uh, Cloverdale's where I am. So best neighbors in town for sure be in Cloverdale. Uh, Langley, here's the reason I personally don't prefer Langley. And I know this is a, a reason that Anita lives where she lives. The traffic in Langley is silly. Like, Anita, I know we were talking the other day and, uh, well, this was the other day, months ago, 
and you were like, oh, I got to get there and there's a little bit of traffic. And you're like, I can't believe it takes me 10 minutes to get across town now. It used to take me five. And here I am at like 64th and 200th in Langley for like 15 minutes just trying to get through the intersection. So uh, personally, that's why I don't prefer Langley myself. Uh, there's some other reasons, but that's the main one. And then South Surrey. South Surrey is getting the biggest. South Surrey is going to be... Um, well, it depends where you are in South Surrey. If you're in the old area of South Surrey where things are really, really like expensive and and was the nice spot that everybody wanted to get to, it's not really expanding a ton. But the other side, Grandview, um, that place is going to blow up. Congestion, though. Also congestion. So move to Cloverdale. That's the right answer. <laughs> Just live where he lives. <laughs> so, Anita, when I'm, when I'm going to Campbell River and I'm cashing out of my Vancouver lottery house, because uh, every house in Vancouver now is a lottery, and I'm coming over there. Am I, am I allowed to ask you, um, where do I move? Like what do you have preferred neighborhoods? Do you, can you tell me where to not be? Or are you going to offend every, all of your local Campbell river rights? Well, I think, you know, we've got really five sub areas and each one offers a unique, you know, depending on if it's a family retirement, you want to be close to the golf course. You want to be close, you know, do you have a boat? Where is it moving at? All of those sort of things play a factor. If you're looking for family neighborhoods, really, you'd probably want to be Campbell River Central or Willow Point. Um, but in all honesty, Quinson Campbellton is probably the least desirable neighborhood. It's mostly industrial now. Like our official community plan has re tried to make that not really have any single family dwellings. Most of them that are have commercial zoning. Um, so it's, you know, it's a little bit of a rougher neighborhood. Uh, but uh, we have we know, have those. I'm from Surrey. Come on, I know all about I those. I know, I know. But I mean, I lived in Campbellton, you know, when I first started in real estate. So there's a lot of beautiful places down there too. It's right on the river. You don't get a lot of riverfront. You know, a lot of them have their own docks, so can have their own boats on it. And so there's some beautiful places in Campbellton as well. But you know, that's a little bit more industrial. Uh, the West End has really gotten a lot more popular. Uh -huh. Not just saying that because I live up here, but there's a lot of bigger properties. There's that big, huge, uh, you know, the Campbell River Golf and Country. It's just, just been all redone. It's a beautiful golf course. They're putting in a huge uh, spa and it's, you know, it's really changed that neighborhood. A lot of new construction. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's, does it feel bigger than it used to? Because to us, like, it's still a small town. Still a small town, like we're saying, I think we're like 44,000 now. Yeah. But um, but it definitely has a, it's got a different vibe going on than it has before. Like the last four years, it's really changing. A lot of big structures going up and we're expanding a little further north, which is kind of interesting. I don't know how familiar you are with like the race point over the Seymour Narrows area. Um, it's it's phenomenal. It's where the ripple rock explosion was. If you want to look that up, it's a big part of the history. And there's going to be 200 lots going up out there that are a little bit more probably recreation use, but phenomenal views. Mm -hmm. You might want to invest there actually, Steve, I'll talk to your wife about it. <laughs> she actually said hi on the chat. I, know, I saw that. But I was like, where is she? Why isn't she on here with us? <laughs> as soon as I start live streaming, she just books it out of the house as fast as possible. So <clears throat> it's, I, I find it interesting because I've almost seen in my personal business now uh, more than like a shift where people were going out of town. They're almost just staying put now. And right? why do you think this? I don't know. It's probably uncertainty, right? Like the market was going so crazy. Nobody wanted to do anything. Now the market slowed down so much. Nobody wants to do anything. So I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and they're like, oh, we're just going to wait and see. And I'm like, well, what does wait and see mean, right? Like, wait for what? Like, you have to put a measure in. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting to see forever and ever and ever. So I just can't see. Um, I don't know. I just I, I, I kind of find it personally foolish when people make decisions based on what the market's doing as opposed to like, like if I'm moving to Campbell River, if I'm coming to see Anita and we're moving to Campbell River, I'm moving there, right? I'm yeah. moving there for probably lifestyle for small town right for finances to to no longer have a mortgage or whatever it is right i'm not doing it because uh you know the market's good and unfortunately people don't realize when the market's good that's only good for part of the market right it's not good for everybody so it's really um 
I don't know. I, I, I am seeing um, like why so many people want to get involved in the market when it's nuts to me. Well, and I think, strange. you know, the global pandemic might have had a little bit of a spin of people hitting a panic state, really, and really evaluating their life. Like, what is my top priorities and raising children or what have you, I think is a, a big part of it too, and lifestyle. And I think that a lot of people who would come to BC or make a move within BC, I really think the island and the interior were pretty top two, mm -hmm. right? I mean, obviously Vancouver, um, but I think with like all the, not that I'm trying to say negative things, I'm from the Okanagan, I have a large amount of family from there, but like with all the fly fires that have been happening and the, like, like their summers have been so awful just with their quality of air. And yeah. did you guys um, get smoked out at all in the last few years? Slightly, maybe like a day or two, but you know, we got that like morning recovery from the salt air. And what the, people don't like here, here's the thing. Like you've been BC your whole life. I've been in BC my whole yeah. life. Yeah. So I, me too. Like I was born in SMH. So like I've moved like four kilometers. Um, the big thing like I've noticed is I don't ever remember once until about 2017 smoke in the summer. And now it's like, I think last year or the year before wasn't bad, but since like 2017 on like August and is, is a write off. Like you I can't know. go outside because the smoke is so bad for like th four, three out of the last four or four out of the last five years. I know. Well, I even went I, with my cousin. We did a half marathon in Kelowna back when I could run. That was a couple of years ago. <laughs> and <laughs> and it was so awful. I could not believe it. You know, you could barely even see it. Just, you know, you can almost taste it when you're breathing. So, yeah. I mean, like quality of air is a huge thing. And I think, you know, like even if you're on a weekend heading over to Vancouver, you can get over on the ferry pretty easy. Coming to the island, if you don't have a reservation, good luck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? I, I could see like if, if it was me and I was thinking like interior island personally, I would now because of the smoke in the summer, I would pick island every single time. Yeah. Um, I know the interiors always had issues with fires, but it's it's strange to me that they're it's such big. It's either so big fires now or they're closer to me, whichever one it is. I don't know. Um, but to me that that is absolutely I, it's just not something I ever thought I would need to consider. I know. Right. And now it's like when you're moving to BC, you're like, holy crap, we got to worry about forest fires. Well, and I think too, a lot of the baby boomers who were traveling go to Arizona for four months out of the year. And then with COVID, you're thinking about healthcare, all of that. You Google where the warmest place in Canada is in the winter and Victoria is the first thing that pops up. Mm -hmm. Right. So then they start looking at real estate in Victoria. You start looking at the island. A lot of people now, like I've been in real estate for 17 years. And I would say it's only in the last like four to five years where majority of the buyers are shopping in the Comox Valley and Campbell River. Because, of course, coming from a larger city, people don't even bat an eye at driving 30 to 40 minutes. It, oh, not at all. That's just, right. Like, yeah, I'm going to drive an hour to my listing on Monday. <laughs> yeah, well, like here, you know, I can be in the Comox Valley, leave my house in under 40 minutes. But isn't that strange for, like you say, the snowbirds, right? So let's say you're going to go to Palm Springs from uh, December 1st to February 28th or something like that, or even March, whenever, and you're going to come home. And then you're going to spend like July and August, you almost have to leave again. Yes. Right. Because if you're, if your house is, in, if you're like Palm Springs and then the other Palm Springs, which is Kelowna and you're in right. Kelowna and there's two months of the year that like, Oh, I don't know how awesome this is getting. Right. So <laughs> John, John is on uh, making comments about, uh, going to northern bc john's a, a guy that i've seen comment on the channel i think he's a realtor up in uh up up in prince george so i guess they're not having the fire issue so yeah i guess they're not they just no issue <laughs> too cold <laughs> <laughs> i haven't been up to prince george in many many years but i don't know actually this is another thing too like uh i don't know if john can comment on it in the comments but I used to have people that would move to Prince George and like, that's a spot that like not a lot of people are. They've got a great university and I went there actually for BC winter games when my daughter was in judo and I thought it was, they did a great job the community. I mean, that's the only time I've ever been there, but uh, I can't remember the university is you have VLA or something, but it's a beautiful university and yeah, it's a really, 
I thought they did a great job. Obviously, there was the winter game, so there was fireworks and, you know, yeah. the town was lit up, but it was nice. How many people are coming from South Island just moving north? Well, there's definitely some. I mean, I'm working with a couple right now. I would say, you know, I don't know the exact percentage, but probably under 5%, maybe. Yeah. But because they, they can cash out there, too. I mean, Victoria's costs are really skyrocketing, too, now, right? Yeah. Is anybody does do people have like concerns right now in your market like they do here, or is it still kind of like because right now in 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 the lower mainland, I know this is happening in Vancouver and in, you know Toronto. There's always the the bubble heads out there that saying everything's going to go crazy and all that stuff. Are there people kind of saying stuff is too crazy there, or are they still where we were three or four months ago, going holy crap, like this is going and going and going, and I still only see upside. Well, I mean, our average sale price still climbed like, I don't know, 28,000 last month. We are, you know, I think one of the big changes for us here in our community is because the average sale price keeps climbing, but it's the people who are moving here are buying what is our high end. You know, that lower end market has very little buyers anymore. Really? Yeah, very little. And um, which is really interesting. And I don't think, you know, we're typically usually two to three months behind you guys yeah yeah right so i mean you know i've been on a couple multiple offers in the last week had a couple collapses too though so that could be a sign we've had more collapses in the last 45 days than we did all last year really yeah it's because now you have unqualified buyers uh offering um yeah we're super seeing a ton of it um we're also now running into things like, you know, regular real estate, right? Like inspection and people wanting to renegotiate and all sorts of different things. But yeah, we've always had regular real estate here. Yeah, right. So even like in a multiple offer, I think one of the larger ones that for our marketplace would be like 12 or 15 offers on one place. Mm-hmm. There was maybe, you know, maybe 50% would be subject free, but we've never seen like all of them being subject free, like how you guys were for what, like two years. Yeah. Yeah. Like 20 16 i don't know if we got any subject deals together right it was all like just unconditional since 20 so eight years you've been no seeing? like in 2016 oh right like 2016 i think we were like a 123 transactions or something and it was like all like unconditional 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 it was crazy time now thankfully that that's kind of calmed down right right so I think that there, I think like personally, I think that's good, especially for first time buyers. They need to be able to do their due diligence and not live in a whirlwind. So are people, I mean, you, you've got small town, small town there. Do you still have the people that like the, the kids that are like, I'm getting the hell out of here at like 18 years old, I'm going down Island or I'm, I'm, I'm moving to the big city or like what's, is there still kind of that exodus of those young kids that think there's something more somewhere else? Well, I'm hoping that that definitely comes into my children's <laughs> thought process. <laughs> what, you hope it does? You're trying to get them out of the door? <laughs> trying to get them out because, you know, my oldest was in university when COVID first hit and then came back home. So I think that scared them. But yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, you know, there's not a lot for 19 to 25 year olds in our community. Yeah. Right. There's just not a huge amount. I mean, obviously, if you're going to go fishing and golfing and all the outdoor stuff, you know, climbing mountains and whatever right there's lots of mountain climbing and a lot of different things here but i think for that kind of vibe for when you're 19 to 25 our town's definitely lacking yeah yeah Yeah. you gotta uh i don't know i'm i would worry about that right because as a dad you would want to be like you know hey are my kids wasting any time doing things they shouldn't be doing to try and keep themselves entertained right that would always be my biggest worry about moving to a small town because everybody's like hey i want to move to a small town and give my kids the experience of like you can run outside and not worry about it and you know like uh, give them that kind of canadiana lifestyle and then it's like i'm also like uh you know at 18 sometimes it's not the best place to be no exactly and that's why i say that for my kids because there is a lot more out there you know, I mean, our, our college and stuff has definitely grown and we offer quite a bit more, but I think, you know, Nanaimo would be the, the next spot of yeah. where some 
would want to go if you're heading south. Don't they call them Nanaimo like Surrey by the Sea? Isn't that what they? That's right. Call it? It must be a great spot. I personally there. wouldn't want to live in Nanaimo. That's just me. Though. Oh man, we're gonna have some trash talking going on here, like island talk. Yeah. No, it was just you know that would just be my own personal choice. I'd probably go Victoria. So if people are moving to the island, maybe Campbell River, maybe not. What? should they look forward to like what what's coming to the island well definitely don't look forward to the ferries um, <laughs> don't look forward to travel look forward look to booking well. your booking your appointments on the on the ferry back and forth in all honesty i never take the ferry i always just do harbor air yeah 18 minutes. yeah Oops. where does so harbor air goes like harbor vancouver to Harbor Nanaimo or Courtney. Really? Yeah. And it's how so long? 18 minutes. Oh man, I've been doing it wrong. You have been doing it wrong, but I guess it's different if you're coming over with the family. Like usually yeah. like say we're going over to Richard Robbins, it's 18 minutes from Nanaimo uh, to Vancouver, Harbor to Harbor. Wow. You don't have to drive, you don't have to worry about ferry, all of that. Um, I, you know, besides Ikea, I don't think that the island's really missing out on much. Yeah. Really, like, there's everything that you could want to do, you know, besides, you know, Victoria has large concerts now that we're allowed to have them back. But I don't think that there's really anything that the island's lacking. Yeah, because you guys had in, uh, improvements in like health care and stuff over the last like five years, right? Yeah, we had two new hospitals, one in Courtney, one in Campbell River. I mean, the health care, Victoria is phenomenal. I mean, I've sadly been there a lot with my family <laughs> so tell me this when someone is coming when idiot steve is coming from surrey and moving to campbell river and i have like all these high expectations that i'm going to get a palace with like a ocean view and all that stuff and then you bring them a little bit back to reality like hey you know it's affordable here but it's not you know everything isn't uh the perch up on the hill what what is the most common like expectation you have to handle to like kind of bring people into reality. Did people think like they're going to get like everything and then they go like for here, I'll give you an example. When people come here from let's call it Ontario, they're like, yeah. we want to go see that 2,700 square foot house. And we show them and they're like, that house is in 2,700 square feet. Oh no, here we include the basement in the square footage back East. They don't do it. Right. right? So that's now an expectation. They're like, Oh, that's 2,700 square feet, not like 5,400 square feet or whatever the math is. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, it's not that big. They're like, oh, well, this isn't big enough now. I'm like a 5,400 square foot house. That's like 2.7 million. Right. Jeez. And they're like, oh, so it, it's just an expectation thing. So is there something like that, that like when somebody's coming from somewhere else or the lower mainland, they come to Campbell River and they're just like, I, I would say disappointed kind of. Yeah, I think the disappointment would factor would be for the views because we have so much waterfront in there, but there's not a huge amount of view homes on the market. So that's one thing that, you know, well, I really want to be able to see the ocean from my house. That's usually one of most people's top things. Yeah. Right. Like they want that or new, like we don't have a huge amount of new construction on the market because we just haven't had much land at all. Like an all time low of new construction. Why building. is the land locked? Is it in, big acreages that aren't doing anything is it park land is it well there's some things land? With like sewer from within the city and some water issues out further on the north end like they had to drill down i don't know if it was like 400 feet um but they were having some issues getting the water so it was more about the services of what they could connect to the larger pieces that are still out there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so a bit of delayed i think last year there was under you know probably well, there was, was 38, like probably under 60 new lots. Really? Which is really low because, you know, like five years ago, it'd be like 250. Yeah. So uh, Canadian style, uh, not enough new supply coming to the market, right? Totally. That's every market, like every market. I, I go to Calgary and I look around and I'm like, you guys don't see those big rolling hills and everybody's like, oh, we don't have enough supply. I'm like, why don't you build on that hill over there? And it's just like this nice slope. Like, you should be able to build there. But everybody's saying, hey, supply or building's taking too long. Is Campbell River like one of those cities where, like, it's hard to build? Well, I'm actually building a house right now. Oh, wow. You're the expert. Here you go. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the expert. But it took, I don't know, probably four or five months to get the final permits and everything from city. And now 
I guess we're like two months in. So yeah, it's like 10 months to build a house. Okay, from application of permit or actual construction? From like the very start of like drawing up the plans and everything to move in. 10 months? Yes. We're coming to you. Like, well, that seemed like a long time for me because I want my house. So just no, so I... you know, Vancouver, before, pre-pandemic Vancouver was 18 months to get your permit. Wow, see, that's, yes, no, we're, yeah, six to right? I had a, um, I had a, a client that put a shed in his backyard, but it was bigger than 10 by 10, so he needed a permit for it. Yeah. So he built like 15 by 15 or something. He went, because he's the guy that does all the things and, you know, goes to the city and, and checks everything. It took him 12 months to get that final approval on his shed. Wow. Right. Well, I guess our city's doing a good job then. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. If you are like file permit to to move on in 10 months, man, I think everybody I'm hoping that my house will be ready um, in August. So maybe you and Meg and the kids can come check out my new pad um, <laughs> when you come to your family. Well, it's funny, actually, that you say that because Garrett Timmons, I was chatting with him the other day and he's building a new house in Calgary. And, you know, we shared each other's plans and we were chatting a little bit. And he said, when do you hope to move in? And I said, July or August. He's like, this year? And I'm like, yeah, because he's he's at least seven months longer. Really? And, yeah. and here's and Derek would be mad if you said he's in Calgary. He's in Airdrie. Airdrie. If anybody well, doesn't know, Calgary. if anybody doesn't know, uh, Airdrie is north of Calgary, I guess. Oh, okay. And, and Derek Timmons is the best looking man in real estate. I think I'm number two, but maybe not. <laughs> what? <laughs> we'll just give him a shout out. I'll tell him that. <laughs> yeah, so uh I don't know. I, I'm I'm shocked right now I'm not seeing more people heading to the island. Are you? I'm I'm not seeing as much of it. And the ones that I am seeing, they're still trying to get into Victoria. And what mm -hmm. most people don't realize is like when you leave Surrey and you want to move to Victoria, Victoria is Burnaby pricing, which is upwards of Surrey. Okay. Right. So people are like, I'm going to move the island and they look at Victoria and then they're actually, I'm like, how much bigger of a mortgage are you taking on? Right. They don't really understand that it's uh, like down in, 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 uh, in Victoria, how expensive it is. And I guess that's why everybody starts doing the progression up to where you are. Right. I think um, John's a little sad that you didn't give him a shout out that he's a nice. Like, John, we already talked about you, man. We're good. Oh, Prince George. <laughs> he's my dude in Prince George. Um, so I think that it's just, um, I, I don't think that the buyers are going anywhere. We have a lot of people that are still, you know, oh, we want to come, but we won't be there till June or, you know, we'll start looking then and. I just think, like I said, I really think we've just become discovered. Yeah. It's like the Hawaii of Canada. <laughs> you guys got to stop saying that. It is, though. Like, I mean, it's funny because, I mean, when you come here, have you gone over to the other islands like on Cortez? No, no, no. You've never gone to any of those beaches and gone all around and actually explored. You just go on the family little nature hike and you don't go explore all around because you look at Tofino. I mean, you have you gone to Tofino? I have time? never been to Tofino. Okay, it is crazy. I told you I wouldn't swear, so I won't even say it's a <laughs> something show. It's like a shit show when you go there. The you know it's so packed because that's the beach that everybody knows about on the island, but the locals never go there because we have white sandy beaches all over yeah. that where the locals go, and it's it is it's beautiful. We have surfers now out there in the winter in their wet sur surfing all along when you're driving along the island highway that's new here like we never used to see that but it's um that's why i say the hawaii of canada because where else are you going and doing that yeah well i think you're taking some artistic privilege by calling it the hawaii of canada <laughs> i guess but i'll take it yeah totally so um what like when when we're thinking Campbell River, you had mentioned to me before that there are additions, particularly coming to Campbell River from like a, I guess you would call it from like a infrastructure point of view. Is there or there's things being added into Campbell River that is like, uh, kind of getting you guys to the next level 
of town? Well, we have a lot of, um, you know, four to six story rentals happening. Um, there's like four new big buildings that went up the rental market. I mean, the price of rent is just crazy. There was just one right at, by the pier that, um, you know, obviously a very nice building that Crown Pacific built and the top floor penthouse was a three bedroom and they were getting like close to $4,000 a month rent all sending a, that, that's very high rent for our marketplace. It's high for right? here too. Yeah. Yeah. And they got, they were gone first. So how about here? There's a good question. Like, okay, so you're going to invest in Campbell River. What are the rent? So let me give you an example here. If I'm looking for a rental, I'm looking for a two bed, two bath unit. It's going to cost me $650,000. It's going to rent for $2,100 a month. That doesn't cover until I'm like 35% down. Yeah. If I'm or coming to Campbell River and I want to invest there because I can't afford seven fifty dollars here, what am I buying? What are you buying? Well, I think that the, I probably would have to say like for single family, like you're going two bed, two bath condo is what you're going to invest in. Well, that's what I'm doing here. So let's say I can't afford six fifty dollars here. I can afford 500 or I can afford four fifty, dollars and I want to come to, to Campbell River. What do I do? Oh, 450 you're in a condo now, you know, like our single family ranchers might be able to pick up a rancher that you could rent out for six to 650, you know, a three bed, two bath rancher, but um, you're probably going into a condo. Things with Campbell River condos is there's a lot, one of the challenges that I find is a lot of them are no rentals and no pets. Mm. So they're right? like 90s built. That's right. Yeah. So I think that that's a bit of a challenge. We need a little bit more supply of that, but the, all the new ones that are coming on, well, there's one new building, but it's not gonna be completed till the end of next year. But they were they they were pre-sales and- um, I love your small towns. I know, I'm just a small town island girl. We got like, right? yeah. Campbell so, River is the salmon capital of the world, John. So let's say uh, it, it for sure is because when I was in Campbell River last time, you sent me to a salmon fishery, which was actually a super interesting, fun thing to do, which I never thought I would say, but it was actually probably, it was pretty cool. Um, so let's, okay, so let's go apples for apples then. So my budget 650 here, I'm getting a, a condo, two bed, two bath. There I get a rancher. I get like an old 1970s rancher detached home. So I don't have a strategy. Yep, that's right. Okay. You know, now what's it rent for? So you would probably, I mean, I'm not licensed. Yeah, not that you're licensed. Hey, get your disclaimers in. in. Property management, Be but you would probably get anywhere from 26 to 3,200 right now. That's crazy. Depending on like, is it a new kitchen? Does it update it? Is it dated? You know what I mean? Like all of that. Does it have a double garage? Is there RV parking? Everybody wants RV parking. So here we can spend 650, have a strata fee and get $2,100 a month. There you could spend 650, no strata fee and get like $2,800 a month possibly. Oh yeah. man, maybe I'm invested in the wrong spot. Right? Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Like I was looking at it with, uh, uh, actually I was looking at it with uh, Jolene up in Edmonton and yes. looking at properties. And it's like, you can write a check for those right now. Right? And the cash flow is not like, cash flow is good on them. Um, I know. I told you I was looking at stuff like two years ago. And now the Calgary market's interesting right now, too, because they're starting what in the last month, seeing a lot of multiples happening and their inventory is not nearly as high as it has been the last like five yeah. years. I wouldn't touch Calgary right now with a. I, I wouldn't. And I got an opinion on that because I just view, view it as so like. Boomer bust that I and I don't know it. I don't know it. Right. So I don't understand. But I just personally wouldn't. I'm seeing so many people that can't afford here. They have FOMO and they're going there. And yeah. if you told me to pick between Campbell River and Calgary, I pick Campbell River every single time. Right. But it's interesting that you were looking in Edmonton. Like, was that something like you would pick Edmonton over Calgary? I would because it had it at that time. It didn't see the run. It didn't see any run up. Um, but it was just literally like they were that much less that it's like you can cut a check out of your HELOC, buy it cash today, and just turn that thing over at a profit, right? You don't need financing. You don't need nothing. You just go in and pay cash. You know, it's let's call it $170,000. And then, you know, you're renting it seventeen, eighteen hundred $1,800 a month. 
Yeah. Like that's, that's a no brainer, except I got talked out of it. Um, and the reason I got talked out of it, sorry, Jolene, if you're watching, I know you're not. Um, yeah. The reason I got talked out of it is uh, I have some, I know a few people that invest there and they were like the headaches with tenants there is not good. Really? Yeah. Like the, well, just the amount of people that just leave, break their leases, you know, not so much trash the place, but like just vacate. Don't tell the property manager they're vacating. They're gone. The check doesn't come in. We try and get checks for like six weeks, found out that they're gone like 12 weeks ago. Like, I don't know. Right. So I just didn't want anything to do with it. Well, that's interesting. You know, and the only reason I was there seeing Jolene and she had to go to one of her condos. It was a beautiful two bed, two bath, nicely updated. And this was probably like three years ago. And it was, I think it was just over 200,000, like 209,000. And I thought, this is a great deal. Yeah. Yeah, they were, I don't know. Calgary was the same thing. Like it just, it looked like a good deal. But I just, I personally, I don't know the market. And I know that there are, there's, there's just so much downside if you need to liquidate quickly in a down market. Wow. And, and I don't even think uh, Campbell River has that. Right. Like, I don't I don't think smaller towns really have that in B.C. Well, maybe if you go up into Lytton or something like that, but those are tiny little towns. Right. So not that I know anything about those areas. <laughs> anyway. Awesome. Anita, I don't want to keep you. You got stuff to do. You got to go build that house. You got to get your hammer out. What are you doing? Well, I just picked up my flooring today, Steve. Pretty excited. <laughs> do you have samples? No, no. We should probably do that off the live stream. Or whatever. Yeah. No, I, I returned them. I was a good girl. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we can wrap this up. I'll keep you on the call so we can chat a little bit later on, but this was awesome. Uh, if people want to reach Anita Painter, I have all of her contact information down below in the description. Uh, otherwise, Anita, how do they reach you? And Probably don't give your cell phone number, but maybe give your office number, website, something like that. How about Anita at AnitaPainter.com? There you go. Oh, you gave an email. You're getting... <laughs> that way, Nicole did it. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. No, that was great, Steve. Thanks for having me on my first live event. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, remember, if you're still watching this, you're probably not. But if you are, uh, like, subscribe, uh, comment down below. And it, both Anita and I will try and come back to this video and, uh, and answer your questions.